Dream Young Media Live. Like, comment, subscribe. Dream Young Media Live. Like, comment, subscribe. What's I'm going doing on? Well, that's good. Good, good, good. Well, thanks for joining us today. How's everything going on at your end with all this um this COVID and stuff like that that's going on with all the protests and everything too? It's for the most part with the protests, it's kind of for us, um, it's kind of calmed down. Yeah, um, yeah. There's still a few protests around the city here and there, but they're not um, as many as it was before uh, with the whole COVID thing. I, I just don't even know what to think of it anymore. Um, yeah. I just really feel like, you know, they should be really honest with us because at this point, when you start giving us, you know, trying to make everything mandated without giving us a reason, a lot of people just go by what they feel is right. Yeah. Right. And that yeah. may not be, you know, the right thing to do. Um, it really affects me because my son has an autoimmune deficiency. Yeah. So yeah. he wants to, you know, he's talking about high school, which he will be going. Mm -hmm. um, we still don't know what that looks like. Uh, they're trying to work out the details, but for us, school normally starts like August 14th. So we're really against time. Um, but it's 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 really crazy. I'm yeah. pretty sure you guys seen the numbers for California. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, pretty there's insane people, out there. Well, yeah, there's ahead, people who Oh no, you're good. Um there's people who just, you know, I do like I haven't honestly been outside since March 13th. Everything wow. gets delivered. <laughs> um all food items gets delivered. Uh I've I've been out like I go out once a month to the bank but that is like try to do all transactions through the ATM. Hmm. Um, and I tell people it's not because of me. I really do it because of my son. Like I fear if I, you know, bring something, I could be a carrier. I don't know how his immune system will react. And that's not, you know, a chance I'm trying to take. So hmm. I do it. That's why, you know, I stay quarantined or try to limit going outside um, as much as possible because it's scary. It's yeah. really scary. It's insane. Wow. It's insane everywhere. You know, um, I mean, I mean, as of right now, everybody's kind of like just, just, just kind of making it up as they go. And then you the know, information changes it's from misinformation, day to day, yep. even hour to Every hour. Day. Going, Every day. Is this safe? Is it not safe? Is it six feet? Is it three feet? Is it, you know, give <laughs> right. us Right. Do we need a something? mask? Do we not, need, not a need a mask? mask. Like, yep. Right. <laughs> yep. You know, now you're saying don't wear gloves and don't, you know, it's just, it's crazy. So I do try to limit the news intake probably once a day. Um, mm -hmm. Before I was like constantly watching it at the nine o'clock hour, 12 o'clock hour. Um, but now I just watch it probably at the end of the day to kind of see the changes that happen through the day yeah. and just make my decisions based on that. Because I just I feel like they're not giving us all the information. They're they're withholding some information from us. I agree. And a lot of people sure. out there suffering financially, too. You know, um, just the fact that we're able to do things online and still kind of move our mission forward. That's great. But if you're in a restaurant business. If you're in a different style business, like a you know a retail store, something like that, it's just a bad situation all the way around for the economy as well. So yeah, yeah, for them to open, I think they opened up for the most part. They opened most of the counties here, and then in eight days they closed them right back. Wow. So That's you crazy. have already instilled the fear of mm -hmm. going out in certain people, and then when you open the economy. It still took a while for certain people to get used to going out. When we finally got used to going out, they shut it back down. Mm -hmm. Now we're going backwards because I think they said like we're at 43 percent within uh, four days or something that yep. spiked. Yep. So people are, you know, like they got one foot out the door and one <laughs> foot in the house. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Right. They go. Yeah. They, they don't know. So it's it's. It, you can definitely feel like the uneasiness. I was telling my mom, like, you know, before someone would sneeze or cough, and you're like, are you okay? Or bless you. Now someone sneezes or cough, you're looking at them like, okay, okay wait, I better that run was out your the store. I better leave. Sneeze. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. That was your second. You sneeze <laughs> back to back. Now there's a problem. 
So yeah. it's it's really yeah. taking a toll on people mentally. Um, and like you said, people are struggling financially. Um, you know, there's a, a increase in domestic violence cases here yes yes. um whether it's between you know the spouses or the kids you know like people don't realize the kids are suffering too like they are suffering you know you're taking away their social interaction the kids are so like they there's they need to be social i mean like my son is just one and i feel bad because i'm like you don't really have anyone to interact with besides me and I think he's to the point, he's like, okay, mom, you're not my friend. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think the kids have it worse, it, to be honest. I think yeah. the kids have it much worse because at least we had a chance for, you know, to enjoy our youth, to enjoy playing outside, you know, with our friends. Now yep. their whole lifestyle has been interrupted. So they're going to miss out on that little window of time that they would have had in high school or junior high and so forth. And they're going to remember this. Of course. Forever. Of course. It's going to change oh, how they think about sure. life moving forward. Yeah. Everything um, they're going to think about, you know, they're, this honestly should be in the history books. Like yes, I was, I, I was just sitting here thinking, like I want to see a history book, probably in the next four years, that and compare it to the history book when I went to school. Like there's a lot of things that in the history book that I went to school with that I didn't even learn that was a part of history until I got grown. Yeah, they yeah. all like the history books taught us stuff like the result of you know like the jim crow law or the result of the boston tea party we didn't Mm -hmm. actually see what led up to these things right so i didn't learn a lot of like i didn't learn a lot about juneteenth until i was like out of i would say probably out of high school i didn't learn a lot of like a lot about my culture until i just took the initiative to learn about it but they didn't teach us that and they didn't teach us a lot of stuff in, in school we didn't we didn't get a lot of the, you know, the background. We got the end result of what happened, but I we agree. never got what caused, you know, certain things happen in our culture. So I would I love to see their 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 year book. I mean, their um, history books in about four years for sure. Yes, well, we can have a whole separate interview on on the school system in the United States and how they teach the students and how we've been taught um, and how you have to be a um, you have to be a self starter like when it comes to learning. You have to go out there. You mm-hmm. have to learn things on your own because if you're depending on a teacher or, or some type of college professor to teach you something, um, that's probably the last place you should go in a lot of situations if you want to have that quality information right. that you can decipher sure. on your own. But this whole interview is really about Crawford kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> so hey, hey, they got to warm up. Yeah, yeah, it's a little warm, <laughs> a little warm up, but it's all you about know, Crawford kids. Warm up. <laughs> I see you wearing a t-shirt. Looks great. Nice, very you know, colorful. Thanks, very colorful. And, and we've done some research on your organization. We're very um happy with everything that you're doing. We think it's, it's oh, very thanks. on point. And we see that you just became a 501c3. So congratulations on that. Woo, I know we know how many steps. That's <laughs> you know, right. You know, you know, Wasn't know, easy. Exactly. Yeah. We know how many steps are involved. Wasn't so. easy. Yeah. Very discouraging. Yes. I can tell you that. Very discouraging. It was to the point where I was just like, God, please. Like, if mm-hmm. this is what you want me to do, like, you you have to. Be, I need you to show presence and be strong in, in your will and let me yeah. know. And he had to show me a few times because I was ready to throw in the towel. I can tell you that. That 501c3 process will, it it really will make you think like, is this what I want to do? And that's just getting it. it. And that's just getting it going. Now you got all the steps to now getting all the, the grant money, um, getting all the volunteers in place and all the things that you want to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, Everything you want to do in the future. So. I jumped on your social media, you know, and we had a chance to kind of look at some of the things that you're doing, which are all exciting, and honestly. Um, so just tell us Thank a little bit you. more about the organization um, and, you know, and break down for the audience a little bit when you get a chance. Talk about your son and why you got into this business and why you started. Sure. Um, that's pretty much the start of it all. Um, I was a young mom at the age of 21, first child. I would and I tell people if I could carry a billion kids, I probably would. I didn't have a uh, bad pregnancy, everything went great. Um, my son born, no problems. Everything was amazing, uh, for, I could, for, for it to be my first child. Um, at the age of, uh, six months, um, that's when vaccinations are starting to come about. Um, and we went in for a vaccination. I was doing everything that, you know, I thought was right at that time. 
um, uh, he received the a vaccination um, and within 48 hours uh, he was like a whole different kid um, his Goodness. stomach swelled um, he Goodness. was getting blotches all over his skin um, his eyes were yellow he looked like he had jaundice and we rushed him back in and they were saying okay well we're going to give him prednisone whatever it is in his blood we have to filter it out hmm. well it was too late um, at you would give him prednisone 15 minutes. He's that happy, energetic baby. Within 20, he's back lethargic, just laying there, didn't want anything. Then he started to really swell. Um, took him to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Amazing team. They didn't know what it was, but they said, whatever it is, we have to treat it like leukemia. Um, they were in contact with a specialist in, um, from Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Um, they flew out. They ran all type of tests. And it came back to where the doctors um, came to ask if I had been out of the country. And no, he hasn't been out of the country, n nothing. And he said, well, we have to treat it like leukemia. So at the age of six months, my son was going through chemotherapy. Mm. Um, we went through the lowest dosage of chemotherapy until they were able to find out what it was that they were curing or what, what the diagnos uh, diagnosis was. Um, our, at six months, his first day of the hospital, um, he was in there when he turned a year old. So we were Thank supposed goodness. to be there for about four, four to six weeks, and it turned into longer than that. Um, they still didn't understand what was going on. Uh, they actually was working with the CDC at that time, and it came about that my son was diagnosed with HLH. It's um, a pretty much a blood disease. Um, it attacks the immune system. They described it as like the big sister and the little sister getting along where the big sister would be his body and he's allowing the little sister to come in. Well, at the time that the vaccination was um, given to him, that was the little sister. Mm. If the body allowed the vaccination to come in and do what it's supposed to do or the body fought it. And for him, his body fought it. Um, reading uh, about this HLH, it's just like, it's a, it's a disease where people it's a rare disease. Um, we were that one in three million where the vaccination will cause the HLH to present itself. And after being diagnosed, after the year, they felt he was still young enough to do a cord blood um, transplant, which is the umbilical cord blood, women who donate their cord blood, the stem cells in that cord blood um, pretty much will help fight off those bad cells and take the place of a bone marrow transplant. Um, we went through that. In the midst of that, he suffered a severe seizure, causing him to have a brain hemorrhage. Mm. My goodness. Um, My goodness. Where this brain hemorrhage was, was at the stem of your brain. So they couldn't do any surgery. They said they go right, it'll affect the heart rate, go left, we'll cut off his breathing. So they asked me, what did I want to do? Um, they ran blood tests to see how much of those bad cells, as they call it, was still left. And majority of them were in his brain. Um, so I decided to end treatment and to proceed with doing the stem cell transplant, um, knowing that those cells were still somewhat active in his body. Um, doing that, I, um, I do if I had to go back, I don't think I would have made that decision. Um, considering where he was, I just wanted my baby. Yeah, um, I get it. I get it. And when that decision was made, it caused everything to shut down for him. He was on life support for two months. Um, on a Thursday, the doctors pretty much said, you know, we've done all that we can do. Uh, we're going to give you time to be with your family, uh, you know, get your family time to come in and pretty much say their goodbyes. Mm -hmm. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I'm soaking all this in and it's just like everything is moving around me but me. 
I'm just here. I, I don't know, yeah, you, you know, what what could possibly happen next. Um, it was to the point where I had made all arrangements. All I needed to do was sign the release of his body. They said he had declared. They ran tests. There was no sign of life. That was on a Thursday. Monday was the day that they decided to take him off the ventilator, but they couldn't do it unless I was there. Um, so I procrastinated that whole day. My family was there. I wouldn't go. I was, I was just declining calls. And finally, the glue of the family, uh, my grandmother called me and she said, you know, baby, I know this is hard, but I need you to pray with me and ask God's will to be done. And this will pretty much bring you closure and it will allow his will to be done. If his will is to keep him here, just remember he lent you, he, he let you borrow him for a certain period of time mm -hmm. to make changes in your life that you needed to make. If his work is not done with you, then he will be here. So I just need you to make, you know, have this prayer with me. And we prayed and I went to the hospital and when I got there, the doctors rushed me and they said, we need to talk to you. I can't let you see your baby right now. So I'm thinking the worst. And when we got into the conference room, the main doctor, he said, between Thursday and today, I don't know what happened, but your baby is breathing 3% against the machine. Wow. Wow. You may not know what happened. Oh, that's happened. right. But, but I know what happened. Yeah, but I you know, know what happened. happened. That's awesome. Well, thank uh, God awesome. for her. <laughs> yeah. So, prayer works. Jesus. Prayer works, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have church right now, but prayer works. You know, yeah, if people you have ain't to a believer, that. you have, yeah, you have to have gone through some stuff, stuff and you have, you have them prayer warriors with you. And I can tell you, I have a, uh, there's nine of my grandmother's kids. And when I say, when she says we need to pray, everybody, That's right. all nine of her kids, plus the 26 plus grandkids she got, we hold in prayer. Um, and when two or more agree, that's right. Hey, in the midst, in the midst that's yep. right. you already know, them, yep. you, you know, them, you get to praying and blessings start falling. <laughs> um, so after that, the doctors worked with him to build up strength. They told me that he possibly wouldn't be able to see because of the damage that was done. Um, they were saying he was going to be in a vegetated state. Um, they were saying a, a whole lot of stuff and, um, they, they tested my parenting skills, of course. They questioned them and they asked, you know, you being young, are you ready to take your baby home? Of course, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, brought him home, worked with him. He, it was to the point when I brought him home, he had a central port line for blood flow. He had a G tube he couldn't eat. Um, he had a pick line as well. So I had to learn how to do medicine you know through the pick line i mean oh. drain through the pick line and also um his feedings i had to learn all of that um brought him home you could literally sit him on the couch run errands and come back he would still be there there was no motion wow. uh one day i had on a necklace and i went over him and he went to grab it <laughs> so i said okay wow. i know you can see mm -hmm. Um, we started with motor skills. It was just pretty much like I, ha I gave birth to this perfectly healthy baby and then I rebirthed a baby with special needs. So that's how I felt. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I was doing everything in my power to give him the best quality of life he could possibly have. He is 14 today. <laughs> nice. Um, the doctors still see him and they just shake their head cause they don't know. Um, we do, he has a speech impediment. Um, he suffers from left side uh, paralysis, his arm, left arm. He doesn't use his left leg. He can use, um, we've had surgeries on the leg, uh, to try to, you know, get him to bear weight. That's still a challenge. So he uses a gait trainer to get around. He uses a heavy duty stroller. Um, I don't know if you guys saw on my page, he yeah. was recently, uh, we fundraised to get him a bike. I saw, yeah, that. Um, I saw that. We fundraised to get him a bike, which 
You know, people take little things for granted. You know, riding a bike. We all rode a bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just felt like, you know, I asked God, what is it that you want me to do? You brought me this far. What is it that you want me to do? What purpose do you have on my life? And it came to me and it was, you've experienced so much to where your child does not suffer from, you know, a cognitive disability. He's very smart. Most of his needs or accommodations are all physical accommodation. Mm. I've been in situations where I've had people look at him because he's pretty tall, but he's in a stroller. Um, I've had, you know, kids run up to him in stores playing with him in toys. And I've had their parents say, don't play with him. Don't play with people like him. Mm. So now wow. it was to the point where not only did I feel like when that comment was made, it was made from a, a mother of a different race. So now I'm thinking, okay, are you saying it because it's my race or are you saying it because of his disability? So not only did I feel like, okay, I need to bring awareness to how important inclusion is in, amongst kids, That's right. but because it was mm -hmm. my son where I dealt with it and I still deal with it on a day to day. So that's where Crawford Cares came from. I felt like, you know, whether they're disability, it's not, I don't look at it as a disability. I look at it as these kids just need a special accommodation yeah, to right. achieve whatever goal that they're trying to do, whether right. they need glasses, whether they need a walker, whether they need, you know, a prosthetic leg, whatever the case may be, it's just a special accommodation. It's not a disability because I don't want them to feel like, you know, they're any different than the next person. Right. Um, right. so that's where Crawford Cares originated from. And that's why I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. Wow. So that's everything in a nutshell. And that's, <laughs> for and, you that, guys. That, that, and that's the whole thing that we believe in is knowing your purpose. You know, you mentioned that earlier that, that once you, once you started asking God about purpose and you were able to isolate that, you came up with Crawford Cares. Um, we believe that knowing mm -hmm. your purpose is key to a fulfilled life. You know, and everybody should be asking themselves that question. What should I do right. that's going to be a, a blessing right. for the next person that I'm going to feel fulfilled doing? And also it's going to be something that's in sync with the way God does things. Right. And then and that's yes. where Dream Young came from as well, because we love doing okay. what we do now. And we've worked in the industry for a lot of years um, on the front lines, providing direct services. And we've noticed that mm -hmm. when we took our consumers out in the community, it would be a lot of looks and stares and people acting a little funny around the consumers if they had certain challenges. And um and and we noticed that it was a disconnect in regards to, you know, awareness and inclusion. And so Dream Young mm -hmm. was born at that point. And so we started the nonprofit. Yeah, and even um agency for persons with disabilities in Florida, um, they called their program um the developmentally disabled waiver. So now, you know, many, many years later, we're now starting to call it an intellectual difference. It's not like you have a disability. We don't want to call right. it that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just a slight intellectual, maybe uh, not even slightly, but it's just an intellectual difference. So. That's right. That's right. And what is Crawford Kids doing right now? I see that you um, have a book bag drive that you're doing like that. And you we just do. partnered with a shoe, a shoe brand. So tell us a little yes, bit about that. Yes, Billy Footwear. So yeah. um, every year, and this is this, I have been doing this for the last, I want to say this is my third year. Um, I notice, and like my son, I make sure when he goes to school, like regardless if he uses the materials, he has it. You know, because mm -hmm. all those kids, they want the new backpack. They oh, want yeah. the new shoes. They want, you know, the new folder or whatever the case may be. It, it just, it's the little thing. So um, about what, yeah, two years, because this is my third year, um, two years ago, I w and I am still funding everything. I use my own money and I go and I buy book bags. I buy the essentials, you know, uh, pencils, paper, calculators, erasers, whatever is age appropriate for each group. And the first year um, I didn't have my nonprofit, so I was calling it Tiffany's Treasures. Um, and I would reach out to, you know, people would post it, my sister, my PR, that's who I call my PR girl. She's <laughs> on it. 
Um, she would post it on social media platforms and I would have people inbox me and, and it wasn't, you know, doing it for show. It was those who were in need. Some people don't like to reach out because they don't want, you know, to be put on front street. And I'm not all about that. So I'm just, they would reach out to me and say, how could I, you know, I have three kids or whatever their grade levels are. And I gave the kids options to send me like, what kind of backpacks do you guys want? I gave them that option because I want them to know, like, you guys are included in this choice too. I don't want you to feel like you have to get what was given because it's a backpack giveaway. Mm -hmm. So they would send me lists of things. And I was actually mailing mailing boxes to families. Mailing mm-hmm. boxes all over the U.S. Um, I actually mailed a box. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Officer Norman um, in Arkansas. Uh, he's a, a police officer and he does a lot of good community work. I mailed off a box of um, backpacks and supplies to a family um, there. I mm-hmm. mailed off things throughout the U.S. And the craziest thing, you guys. I got maybe two requests from a family that was within the state of California. And I was just, I was so shocked. And I said, you know, I don't, and I actually made a post. I said, this is not, and I, and I said, I don't post, you know, people receiving things. I asked them to send me pictures or, you know, I asked them to write a review on the website. But I don't post all of that because if they ask me not to, I grant their wish. Of course. course, But this is this. And I would tell them this is this is real. You know, this is not a fake. um, This is not a a, a fake thing. This is real. I'm out here sending boxes. Um, I've hosted uh, the backpack giveaway for the three years. So I was just mailing the boxes out uh, to families. Um, I've also did a Thanksgiving basket dr- uh, drive. Mm-hmm. I was having food delivered to, to family. Families were inboxing me saying, you know, it's just, it times your husband. Yes, baby. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Okay. And what is his Thank name? Thank you. His name is Antoine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he, he heard the doorbell, so he's telling me the doorbell. So I was, um, you know, I was doing, I did the Thanksgiving basket giveaways. People were inboxing me, letting me know, you know, think this is, and this is before COVID. People don't realize like when you met, you go to work, that's great. But the income that you make is, a, is set for, you know, bills. It's set mm-hmm. for certain things. And so when Thanksgiving comes around, they don't have that extra to go buy, sure. you know, a, for extra dinner that may mm-hmm. last them for one or two days. Yeah. So I made sure that everything in the basket was enough for them, you know, families to eat off of for three days. Good. Um, I had about 10 families reach out to me and, you know, I, I was like, okay, what's your nearest store? Do you want to do a food pickup or do you want them delivered? I had a few say delivered. They were okay with giving me their home address. Perfect. Others said, oh, I'll pick up. And I was okay with that. And just, you know, I was asking them, just send me an email. Let me know that you, you know, you received the items. And, you know, I let them send me the things that they wanted to put in their basket. Once again, I made sure that, you know, because everyone don't eat Thanksgiving like us, you know? (laughs) That's true. (laughs) So, you know, I didn't want to say you want yams. I said, (laughs) you send me your essentials that you want for Thanksgiving and I'll make it happen. So we've done that. And now here I am, you know, on my third year with the backpack giveaway. Um, I've had people ask me, so why are you still doing the backpack giveaway? The kids may not go back to school. And I said, you have to remember, these babies may not quite understand what is really going on in the world. So we need to keep some type of normalcy for them. Mm -hmm. So you know, parents are, I'm pretty sure parents are not thinking about back to school clothes, back to school, you Mm -hmm. know, uh, back to school supplies. But Mm -hmm. this is a thing for me. I want the babies to understand, like, whether you go back in the classroom or you do virtual learning, you still have, you know, activity books, you still have brand new backpacks, you still have pencils and paper. So that is the main focus and the reason why I'm really still doing the, um, the backpack giveaway, because I feel like the babies are the ones who are suffering now. They're not quite understanding. Mm-hmm. And for them not to get what they're used to getting, 
that can be, you know, traumatic for a lot of them mentally. We're, yeah. we're dealing with a lot of the kids that are dealing with this mentally and they don't know how to express it. So I want to at least keep some type of normalcy going on for them. Right. And that's why I still do it. That's great. You know, in our experience as well, uh, we work with adults with intellectual differences and um, they still don't understand. They yep. can't comprehend COVID, this whole thing that's going on. Wear a mask, wash your hands, clean. We can't and we can't like emphasize enough the importance. OK, you can't do what you did. You have to wash your hands more. You mm-hmm. have to distance. You have to wear a mask. Yeah. So yeah. and and even as adults, it's hard to to relay that to them. So I can just imagine our babies, our children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's it's really hard. Even with it's adults, weird. like they're trying to here in California, they have like this long list of laundry list of things that they're going to try and implement in the, the new school year. Mm-hmm. And I went back to once when this all first started, I went to the grocery store and they had the signs going up and down the aisles, traffic, dr- directing traffic up and down the aisles. And I said, these are grown people. They cannot pay attention to the signs that's on the ground and saying traffic going this way. Mm-hmm. You guys are trying to put the same signs and the same rules in a schoolyard. These kids have not seen each other since March. Right. What do right. you think is going to It'll happen? happen. If the adults can't follow the instructions, <laughs> these babies That's definitely, right. and then you want them to keep a mask on for almost eight hours of the day. Yeah. yeah. No. That is not going to work. Like my son rides the bus going to school. How is that possible where his bus, and they call it the lift bus because he uses his stroller. So there's about nine kids that are in the strollers and then there's about i think there's eight that are walk-on kids that actually sit down how are you going to keep these kids from not sitting together impossible impossible Impossible. no you cannot like you he goes to the and there's a, a wonderful after school program that he goes to here in california and I, you know, they're, they're great. Their programs are great, but I feel like they're still lacking that inclusion. They have, you know, the, this, the school age, and then they do have the adult program and the kids, they don't really interact with the outside world, which I think that's where they're lacking. And these kids, when I go pick my son up, they are like, (laughs) they flock to, you know, and it's so funny. I had a parent ask me, do you work here? And I said, no, I just know all the kids from the, kids. the school age to the adults. And they're all in the lobby waiting for, you know, their wow. parents or their rides or what have you. How are you? You can't really get the kids to, you know, understand that in their head. All they know is they haven't seen their friends. They miss their friends. You can't get them to stay apart. So I don't know, you know, what the future holds for Mm -hmm. the whole school system. But the long term, I mean, mean, the long term, um, you know, um, situation with this whole COVID thing is is just left to be seen. It's a mystery. It's a mystery to everybody. All the kids ever going to be able to go back to school, baby. You know, right? Um, are they full time? Yeah, now are they gonna be full time? Alternate just, days. Exactly. Are they gonna just start going to school online? Every school in in the nation is just gonna be online learning. But that's harder on the parents yeah. too. Yeah. You yeah. Know, yeah. How, are, how are the parents going? Right. Who have to work? And then I can say for the school district here, uh, the online experience for you know having a child in special ed was horrible. Wow. Yeah. It was like the kids were left, those, the, the group of the special ed kids were kind of left out. Um, they sent all, you know, the logins for everything virtually. Um, initially, he came home with packets, which was great because each packet was for each individual child. Mm-hmm. But the virtual learning was on a different spectrum. It was hard to get him to, you know, read certain things and coming to find out that there were other parents who felt the same way. Like my child is not up to par to do, you know, what the the assignments are. It was just like they just threw everything mm-hmm. at yeah. the at the parents 
And I had to become an in-home school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> on, on top, top of, of everything else. Yeah. I was just about to say <laughs> that on top of everything, everything else. Yeah. Else. yeah. Like I had to read his IEP and to see where he was, you know, what I can keep, you know, pushing towards these IEP goals. And because each kid is different and each kid IEP is different, what they sent through that email did not fit our, our kids. Yeah. And I was just like, did they they forgot about you know the special spirits that we have within the general ed yep. they don't learn the same way yep. so it was just it, it was it was challenging we're still um we're still you know moving towards that and trying to figure out yes baby <laughs> You shouldn't want to open the door, but here, hold this right now. Thank you. Give me a second and I'll be with you. All right. Thank you. So it, it's just, you know, I, the two days on and then the virtual, I don't think that's going to help the, you know, the parents that are mm -hmm. trying to get back to work and trying to provide now you're saying that they're going to have to carry a less than 40 hour workload because two of those days, those, you know, they have to be at home teaching their babies. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what, what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things are slipping in, uh, you know, between the cracks right now. Yeah. And um, so, so much suffering is going on. That's why we got this platform because it's this little pocket of people in the United States, well, in the world actually, who never get to tell their story. And just and just your story in general is just going to inspire a lot of moms who are going through what you went through at 21 um, currently. And then how now you started the nonprofit and everything like that. I think it's just an inspirational story as a whole. And um, and this platform is just is, is designed to help tell those stories. And I yeah, think it's and a, even yes. even like uh, the other parents who are going through the same thing you were going through, but no one knows it because you're not communicating it across. Right. You know, yep. exactly. Yep. You right. know, every now is just like. There, there has been some, I can say some good, good things come out of this whole, you know, pandemic where you've had time to kind of learn your family, where you've had time to kind of, you know, spend time with your kids and learn things from your kids, where you had time to kind of really, you know, network with other people. Mm -hmm. I am very grateful to that because prior to COVID, we were so you know, on a schedule, getting the kids ready for school, going to work, not really focusing on the kids until you pick them up from work. And then now it's household. So mm -hmm. this has brought everything together. Either you're working from home, you're a teacher and you're dealing with household, you know, responsibilities mm -hmm. in a day's work. Mm -hmm. So I can say that, you know, it, it really opens my eyes to a lot um being able to be at home and be being able to you know focus on my nonprofit focus on certain events and certain activities getting Crawford cares out there um like you said we just recently partnered up with Billy Shoewear um that's one of the other challenges of having a kid you know that need those additional um accommodations whether it's the shoes that's a whole thing in itself Buying shoes is very hard um, when they wear AFOs. My mm -hmm. son actually has one on one leg. So having to buy two pairs of shoes for a right foot and then, you know, a side, another pair of shoes for the upsizing on the left side was very challenging. And mm -hmm. I came across Billy Footwear and their shoes, they're fashionable, they're cute, mm -hmm. um, they serve mm -hmm. the purpose, they're, you know, they're they serve the purpose of what they, what I needed for it. Come to find out um, a lot of parents actually use the shoe for the same thing. And um, we have now a partnership going on. Um, there's more details coming with that. I have discount codes. Um, we're, we're looking to do a, uh, about a 200 shoe giveaway to those nice. who need, That's um, That's you know, those type of shoes. So, uh, that was a that was a blessing in disguise. I, I just pretty much shot an email in the blind, didn't know where it was going to land. It landed on the right person's desk. <laughs> and That's how and you they do it. It's supposed out. to happen that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. How you do it. And they reached out. So I was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. 
Um, let's keep this going. And then you guys reached out and I was like, okay, <laughs> so let's get this it's going. It's starting to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it, so I think I've read somewhere, you know, I think I've read somewhere on your website that your long-term vision is to start a training center. Is that something that well, you long term a daycare? It's it's pretty much a center where all kids are welcome. Um, like mm-hmm. I mentioned That's before, great. the after school program is great, but there are I wanna have somewhat of a buddy system. Mm-hmm. I want it to be where, you know, we have those general ed kids that can come to the center and link up with, you know, a, a kid or a, a young adult that may have an intellectual or physical disability and get to learn, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they don't get those stairs where they're, you know, at school or they don't have that, you know, separate environment where all kids are inclusive and having different events, um, having, you know, child care available. Um, just trying to give resources back to the inner city community because we do lack them so much. A lot of parents may have kids with special needs and they don't think or know that those resources are available. Um, There are so many, you know, centers or child care centers here that offer or say that they offer care for kids with special needs. And when you go visit or they, you know, ask you what type of special needs that your child has, then all of a sudden they don't offer that service. Yeah. So um, that's one of my one of the hurdles I've been through trying to get into the working world and trying to trust someone with my baby. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, you know, want to give that resource back to the community. That's my main goal um, is to find a a building where I can open a center for um, kids with special needs. That is awesome. And and just to um, let the people know, like, give us your your handle, your contact information on, you know, where someone who needs that information can go to. Sure. Um, Our website is CrawfordCares.org. You can reach us through our contact page there. Our Instagram is Crawford underscore cares. Uh, Twitter handle is the same, Crawford underscore, underscore cares. Um, if you want to email me, you're more than definitely, you can do that. It's info at CrawfordCares.org. Um, I, I respond back. <laughs> I, <know>. um, <laughs> <laughs> I respond back. Um, you, we have, uh, we have a, a lot of events coming up. I don't know if you guys also saw, we did the prom dress giveaway. Yes. I worked that. with this wonderful seamstress who brought this young girl's vision um, alive. Even though COVID took that away, I still felt like that should have been given to her. And that was something that she, that she won. And I didn't want to take that away from her. So we still pushed through with that. That's great. And she was, yeah. So we're, we're, we're doing some, some big things. And I looked at, looked at you guys and I was just like, this is amazing because there's not a lot of resources or people who kind of understand where those special spirits are coming from, where the intellectual disabilities, you know, where their physical disability, whatever it is, they still need, you know, they still need support and they still need the extra attention to get out there and be a part of, you know, unfortunately, the world that we're in today, yeah, yeah, but being yeah. able to function, you know, as their own independent self. And that's very important. That's very important. And as we're doing this ourselves, every day we learn something. Every interview, I learn something different. Yep. Um, every time I speak to someone, I learn something else that's going on in the world. I mean, it's just a great it's just a great learning tool, not just for us, but for the people that we reach. So I think that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if we have anything else. I think it was a great interview. I think it was um, great. Um, just let me know if you yeah, like so else. basically I just wanted to just just interject um, because I started my first job was at a, a daycare center and then we did work with a, our aftercare program had special needs students but just like mm-hmm. you said so at first I was like okay yes include them they should be inclusive it should they shouldn't be treated any different mm-hmm. and then as I worked there longer I realized wait a minute no they can't be they they have to be, um, I guess, separated to an extent because they they right. it's a specialized uh, education that needs to happen with them that you just can't get just your conventional way of educating. You, a child. you need special attention. They That's need special right. attention right. and special focus. You do. Right? You need 
you need that and and then it also takes a special person um some people are in it you know it's in and it is it's it's good money child care is good money i know because i get a bill every month <laughs> so, um i get a bill every month just for after school program so it's it's good money but it takes a special person so pretty much our focus groups will have you know the breakout sessions with the kids that have the special needs there will be some type of um, I don't want to say segregated, but there will be some type of separate learning because right. everyone doesn't learn the same way. Everyone doesn't, you know, have or they need that special attention. But at the end of the day, we don't want, you know, the, this group being able to play a game and this group can't play the same right. game. Right. Um, we don't want, you know, and that was big with finding, you know, a school for my son was. I didn't want them to have a recess separate from the other kids. Why can't there be, you know, a recess or a, a, a them being on the play yard at the same kids as the, as the other kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just have to explain to the general ed kids that, you know, you know, don't play as rough or just watch out for them, but still include them in, you know, handball or include them in this, the different activities that you guys have. So that is really very big because once you start including the kids together, then they start to understand, oh, there's nothing wrong with him. He just, you know, uses a walker. But if you keep them separate, they're always in their mind going to build up some type of bias against a kid that uses a wheelchair. Oh, he can't play with us because he uses a wheelchair. That's not true. That's not true. So that is the main focus um, behind it. I know in the email we said we're going to talk about the TikTok. I kind of went off track about that. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. This is what we do. This is what we do. It's from the hip. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was, that's just my main reason of Crawford Cares. And, you know, I hope and wish that I live to see, you know, it it flourish and blossom. Um, But that is the main purpose to open up a child care center. That is my main goal with on top of all the other community events that we have. Well, I think with the experience and the heart that you have, I think you're the right person to do it. That's right. I think Crawford oh, Cares is the you. right company. Just based on everything that you've um, disclosed to us today, I think um, I think you're going to go far. I think I think you're going to oh, impact you. a lot of lives in a great way. So um, I just want to congratulate you again for everything that you're doing. Yep, and hopefully we, this can uh, bring awareness to what you're doing and also what we're doing. So it works yes. for both of us. It's a win-win. Yes, yes. Yeah, and this doesn't definitely. have to be our last interview. As you progress in your... And you're um, on, on your path. Just contact us if something new comes up. And let's share some more stories with the, you know, with all the viewers. Okay. For sure. For sure. Okay. So now you're, you're part of our circle. Our circle <laughs> support yes, is what we call the, it. <laughs> part of the family. Hey, so welcome the family to the family. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for your time, guys. Tiffany. Just all have right. a blessed oh, day, okay? Definitely. You do the same. Okay. All now. right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Tell Antoine we said bye. He right. said bye. He always okay. in the background. Thank <laughs> you. All right. right. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. All right. That was good. We didn't get to the TikTok. That's fine. <laughs>